Welcome to the first in the new series on 427 Motorsports where I, a complete amateur, I'm going to learn how to build an engine and I'm going to show you guys at home, whether you're a professional mechanic, just starting out or even just curious, how an engine works and what the hell is in it. So stick around, maybe you'll learn a thing or two, maybe you'll think, Jesus, he really doesn't know what he's doing or maybe you'll just get a good laugh. Either way, let's get stuck in. So, a little backstory. This is a Volkswagen Golf Mark II turbo diesel engine. Now, this is a engine code JX, I believe. What does that mean? Okay, so basically your car manufacturers will have different codes to denominate different engines. Now, you may have a company like Volkswagen where they do an engine called the 1.9 TDI. 1.9 is the displacement, 1900 well, probably about 18 something something. Anyway, it means 1.9 liters. That means how many liters of air your engine can displace. But we'll get into all of that down the line. Anyway, 1.9 TDI from Volkswagen. Now they do maybe 30 different 1.9 TDI. So how do you know which one yours is? Well, that's where your engine code comes in. That means that a manufacturer or a parts company can decide straight away, yes, it's that engine code, which means it requires these parts, not it's a 1.9 TDI. Eh, these are also for a 1.9 TDI, let's see if they fit. So this is a JX engine code, which I believe came in the Volkswagen Type 25 bus, Caravelle, Vanagon, whatever you want to call it, and the Mark II Golf turbo diesel. Now, I had one of these in my Mark II Golf, and unfortunately, coming down the motorway, the engine mount fractured, fractured, split, broke, whatever you want to call it. It broke, the engine shot forward, all the oil came out and seized my engine in seconds. So, whilst I have another engine in it now, I've been given this one to try and build one up. At the minute it has a 1.9 straight diesel, which isn't going to be very fast, but this is also the engine the car is meant to have. And anybody who knows me is probably thinking to themselves, I don't think I'm going to take any building advice from him. He is, he is known for breaking Mark II Golfs not always my fault but I want to cancel that out by learning how to build an engine and I'll get some advice from experts along the way and relay it to you guys so maybe if you're sitting there thinking I'd love to have a go but I just haven't got the confidence hopefully this web series is going to help you get the confidence you need to start working on your project anyway back on topic so this is the same but different now it's the same engine code I believe but some things are different because this actually came out of the van, which means the accelerator is in a different place, the turbo is slightly different. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the majority of the parts off my other engine and put them onto this one. But first, we're going to strip it down and have a look at the inside of it because again, it was a free engine. I have no idea what the history of it is. All I know is it supposedly ran when it was given to me. So who knows? As you can see, it's missing some parts, but we'll get into that as each episode happens. So join me along the way and hopefully you might learn something, because I hopefully will. <laughs> what are we going to do to this engine? Uh, I'm going to strip it down to the burr block and then I'm going to check things like the head gasket, the pistons, make sure everything's okay. I want to have a good engine by the end of this. So with help from our friends over at Volkswagen Heritage, they're going to help us make sure we get the right parts and provide everything we need to build this up and as we go along I'll give you part numbers and things so if you happen to be also building a Mark II Golf 1.6 turbo diesel you'll know exactly what to get and where to get it. Now a note to maybe the more experienced mechanics I'm going to explain everything in detail that you probably don't need to know if you're already into cars for example I'm going to explain what pistons are what your block is what your diesel pump does a lot of you might already know what this is but I really want this to be a a beginner's guide for anybody who's even remotely interested in building their engine so bear with me if it gets a bit too simplistic but also if you're just starting out bear with me if it gets a little complicated because you can always watch the whole series 
and go back and watch it again and then maybe you'll get, oh, that's what that was. I know that now. It's like re-watching Arrested Development for the fifth time. You're gonna see things you never thought you'd see before, so. So as you can see here, our engine is absolutely filthy. Um, whether it's oil or dirt, I do not know. And for once, I'm actually relatively well-dressed compared to the tracksuits and hoodies I normally wear in our videos. So the first step, I guess, is going to be degreasing the engine and giving it a real good clean because it's always so much nicer working on a clean engine than working on a stinking one. So to degrease our engine, I'm using Gunk, <laughs> great name. Spray engine degreasant. Now this is designed to eat away at oils and greases and things that are on our engine block. And I will do this on a different day in different clothes because yeah. But this was got from our local automotive motor factors and it was only a fiver. So you know, always worth a go with a fiver. Seems to be what we do is, it, it, the instructions say warm engine and then switch off. I think we can take the instructions with a pinch of salt since I ain't heating this engine up unless I get a space heater, so. But what it says to do is to spray liberally, which I'm gonna need to, to spray it liberally all over it and then give it a steady stream of water. But for very important reasons, you can't just start hosing an engine down. You have to think about what you're covering. Case in point, so. Your engine, if it's water-cooled, requires coolant, which is a mixture of coolant, obviously, antifreeze, and water. Now, that means that, sure, some parts of your engine are okay to get water in because they would have water anyway. However, some parts of your engine are really, really not good for getting water in. Case in point, this breather pipe here. Now, put it this way, if there's meant to be oil or diesel in it, don't put water in it. Simple as that. So, you can cover it up in a whole manner of ways. Some people put masking tape on, which isn't gonna work too well with water, I don't think, personally. Or you can just get some old rags, stuff it in, and it'll be grand. So, I'm probably gonna do the rag approach. So, I'll show you where I'm going to put rags in. We'll put them in and get it ready to be degreased. Once we've got our engine all clean and degreased, we can get started into stripping it down, and I'm gonna get started into learning you some stuff. Let's go. Okay, so we're back outside now and donning the slightly more homeless looking attire. But it's time to get this thing degreased. Now the first step in degreasing it is filling in the holes. Now as I said in the video earlier, you have your oil channels and your water channels. But just to be safe, we're gonna fill all of them because you just never know. And as you can see, there's no sump on this. So I've covered that up with rags as well, but we won't be touching the underside. So it should be fine. The water will just run straight off. So it's grand. Now, rags, any old things will do. You don't have to go to a motor factors and buy a bag of rags, you don't have to. Any old clothes will do if they don't fit you anymore. Who needs a charity shop when you've got a garage? So I look at it. So with some scissors and some rags, we'll cut them up and start stuffing. So ideally you want to go for a wee bit bigger than the hole you're actually putting it into because you want it to stick out. Now this is going to absorb the water. Now we're going to try not to just blast the holes obviously with water because you don't have to, it will get a wee bit wet, so. Then we just find our holes and plug them up. It's as simple as it sounds really, it is literally just stuffing it. So because our engine is mostly still together, there's not a lot of holes to fill, so your results will vary on how much you've already taken off. And I do think that's it. So, this will be replaced with the ones in the other engine, so I don't need to worry about that. Same with all of this. Now, the next step to get our gunk. Gunk remover, really, is what it should be called, but whatever. As the instructions say, just liberally spray it on. Leave it for five to 10 minutes. Probably have to do it again. I'd say this is gonna take a couple of goes, but we'll see. And now we wait. Okay, so about 
10 minutes or so has passed, so before we give it a rinse, I'm going to just give it a quick go over it with a stiff brush in order to break up some of the grease a bit and hopefully make it that wee bit cleaner. Right, hosing time. Probably should have warned you, you're gonna get dirty and wet. So very, very wet and dirty. The end result here is pretty good. Not amazing, but pretty good. Realistically, I could have done with probably another can of that stuff. You can read the text properly on the top, that's something. So if you had a pressure washer, you could probably do a better job, but to be, to be honest, I'm happy enough with that. That's a good base for us to start at. I mean, we're gonna be taking the majority of, of it off anyway. We're not using that turbo, we're not using that exhaust system, we're not using that pump, etc., etc. So, I'd say that probably That'll probably do. So now that we have our engine decently clean, we'll get it back into the shed and get it ready for what we're going to do in the next episode. Okay, so here we are with our much cleaner engine. Now it's not perfect of course, because again, all I did really was spray some stuff on it and quickly hose it down. So if you really want to get meticulous with it, you can go over it with a wire brush and all sorts and really make it shine. But all I wanted to worry about was getting it nice enough to actually start to take apart. So that's going to be it for this video because I just really wanted to give an introduction as to what this series is going to be about. So join me in the next episode where I'm going to start to actually strip this thing down and talk about what an engine is, really. <laughs> so I'd like to give a big thanks to our friends at Heritage who have helped us out with picking parts and all the rest. So a big thanks to them. If there's any parts you need for your builds, give them a shout. I'd like to thank John Knightley again. I know I did it in the text at the bottom, but I'd like to give him a big thanks for giving me this engine, which hopefully is a good one. <laughs> I have no clue. So uh, yeah, join us in the next episode. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Tamil Patterson. Follow Connor on Instagram at Hughes Corporation and follow us. Well, we don't really use Instagram, but be sure to give us a subscribe and share it around. If there's anybody you know interested in getting into cars and all, this is where it's a start. So, thanks very much for watching and good luck.